Auspicious greetings. Welcome to a new episode of English Dharma Services. My name is Zhi Tong, and today I would like to continue with the episode on Master Huineng, the Sixth Patriarch. Last week, I shared about the early life of Master Huineng and how he came to study under the Fifth Patriarch. Huineng grew up in a poor family after the passing of his father. And as soon as he grew up, he sold firewood as a means of livelihood. Huineng experienced his first awakening after hearing someone reciting the Diamond Sutra and decided to travel north to seek for the renowned Buddhist master, Hongren, also known as the fifth Patriarch of the Chan School. Hui Neng possessed a very sharp aptitude. He was immediately inspired by the Dharma after hearing it for the first time. Furthermore, he was undeterred by the series of verbal, physical, and mental tests given by the Fifth Patriarch. After eight months of working in the mill, the fifth patriarch left him a mystery by striking the mortar three times. What is the significance of this? Let's find out. Hui Neng understood that the three strikes of the mortar signifies the third watch of the night. So, when the time arrived, Hui Neng went silently to the fifth patriarch's room. The fifth patriarch had used his robe as a screen so that others could not see into his room. And in the middle of the night, and under the utmost secrecy, the fifth patriarch began to expound the meaning of the Diamond Sutra. When he reached the sentence, Let the mind be present without an abode, Hui Neng experienced a great awakening. He realized that all phenomena are not different from intrinsic nature. He exclaimed to the fifth patriarch, Who could have thought that intrinsic nature is inherently so pure and clear? Who could have thought that intrinsic nature is inherently neither created nor destroyed. Who could have thought that intrinsic nature is inherently complete? Who could have thought that intrinsic nature is inherently unmoving? Who could have thought that intrinsic nature can inherently manifest all phenomena? At that moment, the fifth patriarch knew that Hui Neng had awakened to his inherent nature. He knew Hui Neng had fully mastered the teachings of Chan. This is a mind-to-mind -mind transmission. And this was the successor he had been waiting for. The fifth patriarch said, Without knowing the inherent mind, learning the Dharma is of no benefit. One who realizes the inherent mind and sees inherent nature is a person of greatness, a teacher of heavenly and human beings, and a Buddha, an awakened person. In just a night's time, the fifth patriarch transmitted the teachings of the Southern School to Hui Neng, as well as the very important and symbolic rope and bowl. The fifth patriarch said, You are now the sixth patriarch. Protect your thoughts well and ferry all sentient beings. Spread the teachings for the future and do not let them come to an end. The fifth patriarch continued to advise Hui Neng. In the past, when the patriarch Bodhidharma first came to this land, the people did not grasp the lineage and the teachings, 
so he used the passing of the rope to authenticate the lineage from one generation to the next. However, the Dharma is transmitted from mind to mind based upon one's awakening and understanding. From time immemorial, Buddhas have passed to Buddhas the intrinsic nature, and patriarchs have passed to patriarchs the inherent mind. Because there has been such strife over this rope, do not continue handing it down. If you do so, the lives of future patriarchs will hang by a thread. You must live quickly now, for others may do you harm. Huineng asked, Where should I go? I am from the south, and I'm familiar with the mountain trails. How do I get down to the river? The patriarch said, You need not worry. I will take you there. The fifth patriarch accompanied Huineng all the way to the dock, and instructed him to board a boat. While the fifth patriarch was manning the oars, Huineng said, Venerable Master, please be seated. Your disciple should roll. The patriarch answered, But it is only fitting that I ferry you across. Huineng replied, When I was deluded, my teacher ferried me. But now I am awakened, I shall ferry myself. Both are ways to get across, but the process is different. Since I was born in the countryside and do not speak the language properly, I am thankful that you have transmitted the Dharma to me. Now that I am awakened, it is only appropriate that the intrinsic nature ferries itself across. The patriarch remarked, Precisely, precisely. Henceforth, you shall spread the Dharma far and wide. Three years after your departure, I will pass away. You should depart now and quickly travel south. Do not start teaching too quickly because it is difficult to spread the Dharma. When they reached the other shore, Huineng bade farewell to the patriarch. They both know this would be the last time that they see each other again. Let us take a moment to think about this. Huineng took a month of traveling in order to learn from the fifth patriarch. But after the initial meeting, he was sent to work in the mill for eight months. However, in just a few hours, of teaching the Dharma to Huineng, the fifth patriarch knew he had found the next successor. The relationship between a master and disciple does not need to last a very long time. It is more important for the disciple to realize his master's teachings and to take it to heart. Some disciples stayed by their master's side for their whole lives without ever realizing anything. This mind-to-mind -mind transmission makes the Chan school so unique in Chinese Buddhism. Now, let us return to the fifth patriarch. When he went back to the temple, his disciple knew that he had transmitted the rope and bowl to Huineng. Huineng, an uneducated barbarian from the south, and a lay person, they were furious. So in fact, many of these disciples came in pursuit of the rope and bow. Among them was a monk named Hui Ming. Hui Ming was an army general before renouncing as a monk. He was a rough man, intent in his pursuit, and was actually the first person to catch up to Huineng. Huineng knew he could not win by force, so he put the rope and bowl on the rock before hiding in a nearby bush. He thought, this rope symbolizes trust. How could anyone take it by force? 
When Hui Ming reached the rock, he was surprised to see that the rope and bowl was just sitting there without being guarded. He seized them immediately. But to his astonishment, he could not move the rope and bowl. No matter how hard he tried, the rope and bowl remained stuck to the rock. He felt ashamed of his own actions and called out, Fellow practitioner, I came here for the Dharma, not for the rope. Upon hearing this, Hui Neng came out and sat on the rock. Hui Ming bowed before him and said, Please, Teach me the Dharma. Hui Neng replied, Since you are here for the Dharma, remove all your mental conditioning and do not give rise to a single thought. I will then teach you. After Hui Ming had calmed down and cleared his mind, Hui Neng said to him, Do not think of wholesomeness. Do not think of unwholesomeness. What then is your original face? When Hui Ming heard this, he felt as if he was struck by thunder. The delusion was blown away from his head like dark clouds from the wind. He had realized his original face, his true nature that was clear of all delusions and troubles. Hui Ming exclaimed in wonderment, Though I had spent time at Huang Mei, I did not awaken to my original face. Now, thanks to your guidance, I realize it in the same way that one who drinks water know if the water is warm or cold. From now on, you are my teacher. Hui Neng replied, if this is the case, we are both fellow disciples of Huang Mei of the Fifth Patriarch. Protect the Dharma well. Hui Ming paid homage and left. Though Hui Neng reached the south, he was still pursued by vicious people. He had no choice but to hide his existence to protect the Dharma lineage. For the next 15 years, Hui Neng found sanctuary with a group of hunters and taught them the Dharma whenever the opportunity arose. Oftentimes, the hunters would ask him to watch the nets, but each time when an animal was captured, he would set them free. During mealtime, he would put the vegetables into the same pot that they had cooked their meat in, and when asked, he would say, I just want to eat the vegetables next to the meat. Hui Neng was waiting for the right time. And one day, about 15 years later, Hui Neng thought, It is time for me to spread the Dharma. I cannot stay hiding forever. So he bade the hunters farewell and left the woods. He traveled into the city and arrived at Fa Xing Temple in Guangzhou. On the day of the arrival, a venerable Ying Zong was expounding the Mahaparinirvana Sutra. During the Dharma talk, a banner was flapping in the wind, and a monk said, The wind is moving. Another monk said, The banner is moving. Both stood their grounds and refused to budge. Hui Neng came forward and said to the both of them, the wind is not moving, neither is the banner moving. It is your minds that are moving. Everyone around who heard his answer was astonished. Very quickly, Hui Neng was brought to the Venerable. Venerable Ying Zong did not look down on this lay person and instead invited him to a high seat of honor and asked Hui Neng to speak about the deeper meanings of the Dharma. Hui Neng's answers were brief, to the point, but not literary. Venerable Ying Zong was surprised. This practitioner is not an ordinary person. 
I have long heard that the robe and dharma of Huang Mei have come to the south. It is not you, is it? I dare not say so, Hui Neng answered humbly. And this is how Venerable Ying Zong knew that this was the sixth patriarch, and he paid homage to Hui Neng. Venerable Ying Zong then asked Hui Neng to show the assembly the robe and bowl he had inherited from the fifth patriarch. Venerable Ying Zong asked, What instructions did the fifth patriarch leave with you? Hui Neng replied, There are no specific instructions. We only discussed seeing intrinsic nature, not meditative concentration or liberation. Venerable Ying Zong asked again, Why did you not discuss meditative concentration or liberation? Hui Neng answered, It is because they are dualistic and are not the Dharma. Because the Dharma is not dualistic. Venerable Ying Zong was delighted with Hui Neng's answers. With joined palms, he said, The way that I teach the sutra is like broken earthenware. Your discussion of their meaning is gold. He then proceeded to shave Hui Neng's head, and from this point on, 15 years after Hui Neng inherited the robe and bowl from the fifth patriarch, he officially became a monk, and he began to spread the teachings of the sudden awakening in the south. Master Hui Neng's life was filled with twists and turns. Though he was born into poverty, he inherited the great legacy of Chan Buddhism. Though becoming the sixth patriarch, he was forced to hide in order to protect the legacy. Even after he became established as a great Chan master in the south, he was still experienced assassination attempts. Though he received the extremely symbolic robe and bowl, he never passed them down. But this doesn't mean that the Chan legacy was gone. In fact, his teaching attracted disciples far and wide, and many of them attained awakening under his sharp teaching. Together, the disciples of Hui Neng spread the Dharma and influenced Chan to become the mainstream form of Buddhist practice. In the Platform Sutra of the Sixth Patriarch, translated as the Rabbit's Horn by the Foguangshan International Translation Center, you will find the records of Master Hui Neng's very inspiring and often surprising teachings of the Dharma as well as Venerable Master Xingyun's commentary on the parts of the sutras. Master Hui Neng never answered the way you'd expect it. Yet time and time again, he breaks the preconceived views of people who came to challenge him in order to shake them away from the illusions that they think is the reality. That's the Chan way. As Master Hui Neng said, the Dharma is within the world. Apart from this world, there is no awakening. Seeking the Bodhi apart from the world is like looking for a rabbit's horn. Let us strive to look within and discover our true nature right here and right now in this world. Thank you for listening to this episode of English Dharma Services. But before I end, there's an upcoming event that I would like to share with you. The Thank Buddha It's Friday online English Dharma talk hosted by Shifang Temple in San Diego will be held on Friday, September 23rd. The title for this month's talk is Resonating with the Dharma, Practicing Buddhism Through Body, Speech and Mind. And the guest speaker is Mr. Andrew Nui. Please register online if you would like to join this event. 
May you discover joy and inspiration in the Dharma. Amitabha.